Welcome to Terracom Video. My name is Eric Call, and I'm going to be your instructor for this course. Over the next while, we're going to take a look at mobile communication networks. We'll start off with some basic radio principles, understand the difference between analog radio and digital radio, and then we'll look at some basic ideas of mobile communication networks and what the idea behind cellular is and cells and handoffs. Then we'll look at the first generation analog and the improvement on that, the second generation, and the two camps that emerged in second generation, the CDMA camp and the TDMA or GSM camp. Once we've got that under our belt, then we'll look at data over cellular and 3G and understand the migration paths for the two camps, the CDMA camp and the TDMA camp, and the different flavors of 3G and the issues associated with them. And then we'll wrap things up with some lighter fare, an overview from the user's point of view as to what applications and the user interface and what sort of speeds we might be expecting and what some of the ongoing issues and arguments are as we progress to 3G. We'll try to avoid getting caught up in jargon and concentrate on conveying the key ideas. And we'll try to keep things a bit light. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy the presentation. Let's talk about cellular and what the basic idea behind a cellular radio system is. Before we deployed cellular mobile communication networks like AMPS in the United States, there was a mobile communication system in place which was called MPS. And this is when people had big whip antennas on the back of their car. And if you wanted to call that person, you had to call a mobile operator and ask to be patched through to that mobile. Maybe you could get through, maybe you couldn't, uh, probably not, because there was hardly any capacity and very little coverage. There was only radio coverage downtown in big cities. And there was no idea of mobility. The person couldn't start a phone call while being served by one base station, one antenna, and then drive away from it and be handed off to another one. No, the call would just drop. That was called MPS, the mobile phone system. Now what we wanted to do was we wanted to improve three things. We wanted to improve the coverage have actual radio coverage available all over the place, ideally, at least in all of the major towns and cities and along all of the major highways. We wanted to improve the capacity, have more available capacity so more people could talk at the same time. And we wanted to allow mobility, where people could start a phone call and then drive away from the base station that they were using and be handed off to another base station and another one all down the highway without having the phone call drop. And in North America, as we're going to see, the technology that was used for this was called AMPS, the Advanced Mobile Phone System. Now AMPS was a cellular radio system. And the idea here is that when we looked at doing this, uh, from a cost-effective practical point of view, there were not a lot of radio frequencies available. They were all taken up by uh, taxis and the military and air traffic control and stuff like that. And so there were only little ranges or bands of frequencies available. And what we want to do is cover the entire state with just this little band of frequencies. The technique that was used was to take the band of frequencies that was available and divide it up into smaller groups and then go out and build big ugly towers and use one of those groups of frequencies on that tower. For example, this slide shows a particular geographic area, it's Silicon Valley, 
And let's say that we have to figure out how to cover all of Silicon Valley with a mobile radio communication network, given that we just have this little band of frequencies available and literally thousands of users. Well, what we're going to do is have a real estate department, and they're responsible for going out and securing actual physical real estate where we can put up big, ugly towers. So we'll pay you $50 and put a big, ugly tower in your backyard. And we'll put a base station transceiver at the bottom of the tower and antennas at the top. And these radios in the base station transceiver are fairly low power, so they only end up having an effective range of maybe three or five miles around the tower. This is the cell. So what we could do is uh, give you 50 bucks and build the big ugly tower in your backyard in, uh, say, Menlo Park, for example. And then we could go, oh, I don't know, seven miles away across the bay in Fremont and build another big ugly tower and use a second group of frequencies out of our available band. And then we could continue this on, for example, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Now we've used up all of our available frequency band and we've covered this particular geographic area. But the whole idea with a cellular system is that we could now go over to, say, Woodside, for example, and reuse one of those groups of frequencies. And since they're low-powered radios, if they're far enough apart, those two base stations are not going to interfere with each other because now they're 20 miles apart. This is the idea behind a cellular radio system is to be able to reuse groups of frequencies geographically over and over and over again. And what we end up doing is covering the whole state with just this little range of frequencies broken up in a few groups. So cellular is a term that's used to refer to particular technologies, but it's actually an idea, and the idea is frequency reuse. Now this is a mobile communication system which means that you're allowed to get in your car, start a phone call, and then drive away from the base station. And at some point, you're going to be too far away from that base station, we're going to have to hand you off to the next base station. And when that happens, two things have to happen. One, the network has to stop listening to and sending information to this base station and start sending it to that one instead. And the other thing that has to happen is that your mobile has to change which frequencies it's operating at. Because the whole idea is that each base station uses different frequencies. The last point on this slide is mode switching. We now have three different generations of cellular deployed, sometimes all actually in the same physical place. And so the decision as to whether to hand you off from one base station to another is getting exponentially more complicated because the question becomes should we hand them off from this base station to that one but if there are overlapping technologies does the person's phone support first generation, second generation and or third generation?